Hi guys and welcome to the second episode of the photography series where I'm going to show you how to figure out all the different settings for your setup. In the last episode, I talked about all the different equipment you need for dental photography. So if you don't have your setup yet, go check out that video. And in the next video, I'll show you my techniques for actually taking the photos. So like and subscribe so you don't miss out on that. There are timestamps down below if you want to skip around, but let's get right into it. So before we jump into the settings inside the camera, there's something you need to adjust on the outside, and that's the diopter. This little dial, usually next to the viewfinder, adjusts the viewfinder to suit your eyes. Turn the camera on, put it on auto mode, and point it at something with text. Look through the viewfinder and adjust the dial until all the text and icons on the screen are sharp. And that's it. Now, let's move on to the camera settings. With all the settings I'm going to mention today, the main goal is to find the perfect setting that works for your camera and flash. So you just set it up once and you never have to tinker with it again. We also want to make sure all your photos look consistent. And the only way to do this is to manually control all the settings. Most tutorials or guides out there just give you the settings to use as if it will definitely work with your setup. But the truth is, the settings you use might need to be slightly tweaked for the setup that you have. My goal in this video is to explain the settings so you have the basic understanding of what they do and then I'll give you the settings to use as a starting point and I'll give you advice on how to tweak them depending on how your photos are coming out. One setting which will always need to stay the same is the white balance. This tells the camera how blue or yellow the light is. Because we're going to be using flashes, we need to set the white balance to flash. Cameras usually have a default white balance on automatic. And this means your camera will decide the white balance itself. And this is where you can get inconsistent before and after photos. Another setting which I recommend you change if you're a bit more advanced, is to change the file save type from JPEG to JPEG and RAW. This means it will save both file types every time you take a photo. The advantage of having a RAW file is that you can use the photos to submit for awards if needed, but more importantly, if you mess up and take a photo that's a bit too dark, you can edit the photo afterwards on your laptop and bring up the brightness. This is best done on a RAW file because the file size is much larger, so the software has much more data to work with. So the three main settings you want to control in your camera are the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed. These three things impact the exposure of your shot, which is basically how bright or how dark your image looks. So let's start with ISO. This is how sensitive the camera sensor is to light. The higher the number, the more sensitive and the brighter your image will be. But this increase in sensitivity comes at the cost of noise, which makes your photos look grainy. And this is why in dental photography, we have these flashes which help give lots of light so we can keep the ISO as low as possible so our photos don't look grainy. So the recommended ISO is 100, the lowest they can go. But just remember for troubleshooting, if you increase the ISO, your photos will look brighter. Next is the aperture. This is how wide or narrow the opening of your lens is and it's measured in f-stops. As the f number increases, the opening gets smaller and so less light is let in. But the advantage of the smaller opening is that you will have more teeth in focus. So with dental photography, we want a high f number, which gives you a very small aperture and a deep depth of field. This will make sure as many of the teeth are in focus as possible. If you've ever taken a photo and maybe just the incisors are in focus and the posterior teeth are all blurry, it's probably because your aperture setting is wrong. The recommended aperture for portraits is f11 and for intraoral photos is f22. I generally don't recommend changing this setting too much when troubleshooting because I think you can fix most issues by changing the other settings. The last setting is shutter speed. This is how long the camera sensor is exposed to light and is measured in seconds. So a shutter speed of one means the sensor is absorbing light for one second. A shutter speed of one over two means half a second. So the bigger the number in the denominator, the shorter the camera sensor is exposed to light, which means your photo will look darker. So big number equals darker, small number equals lighter. The recommended starting point is one over 200. That's one two hundredth of a second, but you can adjust it if you need your photos to be brighter. But I wouldn't suggest taking the denominator to any number lower than 125 because your photos might start to look shaky because of motion blur if your hands are not steady enough. So here is a summary of the starting settings for the camera on the screen. I'm referring to them as starting settings because you may have to tweak them slightly and I'll talk about that later in the video. Now, before I move on to talking about the flash settings, I'd really appreciate it if you guys gave the video a thumbs up. It really helps our channel grow and reach more people. Thank you. 
So next, you want to set up your flash. As I mentioned in the last video, the flash is the most important part of how your photos look and the way we set it up can play a massive role. Have you ever looked through Instagram and you see before and after photos of a whitening case and the after photo just looks completely brighter than the before photo and it makes you question the legitimacy of the case. I mean, look at the difference in the brightness of the gums in these photos. That can happen if you use a different ISO, shutter speed or aperture settings for each photo but most commonly it's because you have your flash on TTL mode, which is basically automatic mode. In this mode, as you press the shutter button to take the photo, the camera tries to decide how much light it needs and it automatically sets the power of your flash. This is where you can get inconsistent photos because each time you take a photo, the camera might decide a different flash strength, especially if the before and after photos are taken on different days, in a different room with a different amount of light. I appreciate setting the flash on TTL mode might be the easiest. And if you're really not bothered about consistency and prefer to have an easier method, then go ahead and set your flash to TTL mode. But if you want to make sure you have consistent photos, you need to use manual settings on your flash. This just requires one session of practicing taking photos with your nurse or even a family member just to figure out the exact flash settings you need. So to start figuring out all the settings for your flash, set your camera settings to the one on the screen. As mentioned before, these are your ideal starting settings and hopefully you won't have to change them much. Start with the settings for the portrait view. Set your flash to manual mode and put it on full power one to one. Put your lens in autofocus mode and take a photo. Most likely it will be too bright, so bring down the power of your flash by one setting. Your flash might do this in halves or thirds. Then retake the photo and assess. Keep going until you find out which power level is suitable. That's your flash power level for portraits. Now. Put your lens in manual focus mode and turn the focus ring to one to three. In the next video, I'll be talking in a lot more detail about this focus ring and the magnification ratio, which is this one to three setting. Do the same for your intro oil shots. Set the camera setting to the one on the screen and start taking photos, reducing the power of your flash as needed. What you will find is that the power of your flash will be the same for all your intro oil shots. So once you've figured it out for just the standard anterior shots, you should make a note of it and that will be the power setting you can use for the rest of your intro oil shots. Hopefully Hopefully, if all went well, you should now have your settings for both portraits and intro oil photos. And if you do, that's great. But sometimes what will happen is that one flash setting will be too bright, and then you take it down by one setting, and now the photo is too dark. So here is a troubleshooting guide. If at full power, your flash is too dark, which is quite unlikely because the flashes I recommended in the first part of this series are quite powerful, but if it is, then you should think about changing some of the camera settings. Change shutter speed from 1 over 200 to 1 over 165. If you remember from before, this means your camera sensor will be exposed to light longer and so will brighten up your image. If it's still too dark, try 1 over 125. If it's good, stick with that. But if 1 over 125 is now too bright, go back to 1 over 165, which will be too dark, but change the ISO from 100 to 200. And if you remember from before, increasing the ISO increases the sensitivity of the sensor to light so it makes your photos a bit brighter. This is why it's important for you to have a basic understanding of these settings so you can change them to find out what works for your setup. Once you figure out once, you're good to go and taking photos will be so much easier. When troubleshooting, stick to changing the flash strength, shutter speed and ISO because if you change the aperture, you might make focusing a little bit harder and you might be focusing on fewer teeth at a time. If I had to give you an order, I would say always try to change the flash power if that doesn't help, change the shutter speed, but don't go any longer than 1 over 125. And if that still doesn't help, change the ISO. Pause on the screen now for a little reminder of how these settings will affect your photo. So that was everything for settings. I know there's a lot, but if you have any questions, put it down in the comments. A lot of effort has gone into this series. So if you enjoyed this episode, please give the video a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next episode. In the next video, I'll be covering how to actually take these photos and the techniques that I use. Thank you for watching.